Okay, so this is what we are working with today. So I know last time I said that hopefully we'd be working with polymorphism and inheritance, but I think that this might be a better transition into that unit of understanding. So here is some stuff for GT calculus as well. If you're in uh, linear algebra, GT cal or it doesn't even have to be GT calculus. If you're in linear algebra or or a calculus class like that, right? Then this will be a good way to also understand how to do elementary row operation and reduction of matrices and systems of linear equations. So in this case, we have a simple driver class. All it does is it performs the basic functions that can be reproducible over and over again. It drives the actual functions that the other class files do, right? And so in this case, we have just the basic scanner, set up matrix. So uh, you input the matrix, and then it uh, uploads that to the linear system, which I'll go over soon. Then it uh, fills it up, fills up the matrix, then it prints out that matrix, and then it solves the mat then it solves the system. And then we create a solver to solve the system and then we print the solution. So in this case, I can run this code, right? And so in this case, I can say that, say I want a two by three augmented matrix. So we have a negative eight, two, and three, and then one, three, and two. So then those, and then this is the result. It reduces it for you. You see how this is in uh, row reduced echelon form right here. Okay, and so then your solutions are x1 is equal to negative 0.19 essentially, and x2 is equal to 0.73. All right, so that's just a simple um, understanding of that. And in that case, if you want a no solution answer, then I'll do like three, uh, then we'll do a two by three, um, one, two, Three and then one, two, three. Boom, there you go. All right. One, two, three, one, two, three gives you, um, well, this is an infinite solution one. So let's do a two by three, one, two, three, and then one, two, four. Boom, there you go. There's a no solution. So in that case, particularly, right, we have our setup. Okay. So it starts off with our interface matrix, our matrix interface. So our matrix interface is a bunch of basic methods that we need in order to actually manipulate our data. So we have get num rows, get num calls, get row, and then you know you can call, you can uh, return that row that has the given row index, get the column that has a given column index, and you can also re get the element get returns a specified matrix element. Uh, given a specific row and column, all right. So then we move on to the next thing, which is element, uh, which is our linear system. Okay, let's go over this later. Our linear system, because this includes the linear system. Okay, our linear system, which implements matrix. We went over implementation interfacing last video. Go check that out if you haven't already. Other than that, this is our matrix instance variable. This is our rows and our uh, constructor constructor method, and then we have all those implemented methods. But then this is the this is a new one. Get num variables. This returns the number of variables. I don't think we ever really used this, but um, it's useful in case we ever need it for some other term. Say we want to do like check to see if it has no solution or if it does have a solution. Right, that would be one way of doing that. So what this does is actually the, the index, unlike last time, where it referred to the zero with position in that first spot. In this case, I have it set up so that it's easier to understand. Okay. Right. So in this case, I've set it up so that the indexing actually makes sense to the person who is interfacing. Uh, that you know the indexing actually um, makes sense to the person uh, who is you know using the user interface. In this case, this is the user interface right here with the scanning. Uh, and the input of variables and numbers, but I just made it easier for that person because say they don't know what that indexing means, this makes it just so much easier for them to understand.
Okay. Next thing is um, right. So this just has all the methods, and then we have the print. And basically, all it does is just do everything that I said it does. Right. Uh, you fill row, fill it up, fill up the matrix. You know, just the simple stuff. Pause it if you want to copy the code. All right. Moving on. We have the elementary row op class. Now this refers to elementary row operations. This will be used in our system solver. Now there are three elementary row operations that you can do as specified in my uh, linear algebra video referring to how to reduce systems of linear equation, how to solve systems of linear equations through elementary row operations. Okay, so there are three of them. So you can either multiply by a scalar, you can do row interchange, uh, and you can do row addition. So in that case, multiplying by a scalar just takes the row, takes the, the index of the row. Uh, you have to have the linear system, and then you have a scalar. And you just multiply that row by the scalar, and it returns. Um, and then all this does is just manipulate that, that row. Okay. Then we do the same thing here. It just manipulates the row by swapping them. And then this one adds them. So here's actually a preset. So presets means that we have an in, int array of length 4, uh, index 1, index 2, scalar 1, and scalar 2. Row addition will perform row uh, of, will perform the row of index 1 times scalar 1 minus the row of index 2, uh, I think this is actually supposed to be a plus, my bad, plus the row of index 2 times scalar 2. So in this case, if scalar 2 is like negative 1, if scalar 1 is 3, then it'll go 3 times. Uh, and then index 1 is 1, and index 2 is 2, then it'll be um, three, to 3 times row 1 plus uh, negative 1 times row 2, which is basically just 3 times row 1 minus 1, minus one times row 2, okay? So that's what, this, that's what this means. Sorry for the confusion. I will compile that and fix that. The understanding should still be the same. You still have a, uh, a length 4 array called presets. And so here you actually can see what makes up the pre uh, whoops. You can actually see what makes up the presets right here. All right. And then here we multiply by scalar, but this is this one, which is the private one. It's a little bit different than this one because this one actually does it, you know, it doesn't manipulate the row. It actually just multiplies the row by scalar, it gives you a temporary one. And yeah, so then there's that. All right, so then this is the actual bulk of the code. All right, this is the system solver. The system solver uses the linear system. It creates a private instance, and then this just takes in the an input uh, of a linear system. Okay. So then we have a bunch of methods, a bunch of methods like find pivot in row, find first pivot in call, pivot swap remove L, and then check pivots, lower vowels, and then finally we have solve, all right? So the ones that we're really going to focus on are like find pivot and row, find first pivot and call, pivot swap, easy, just swaps to get the pivots, um, and then remove element just removes an element. Uh, it's a way of trying to get it to remove, right? So the additive inverse is where A plus B is equal to zero, and then it finds the added inverse, find the scalar for the upper row, double uh, the factor uh, is equal to the added inverse divided by the system dot get that element, pip row, position one. All right, so you see all this stuff. All, it performs a lot of math, a lot of stuff over and over and over again. The way to do this actually required a lot of mapping out of the process again and again. So here's what this does. So first, it sets the initial pivots, all right? So when I say sets the initial pivots, this is what it does, is it do performs the pivot swap. Uh, it looks to see where the first pivot is. If you haven't taken linear algebra, then you're, you're going to be completely confused, so I'm just going to say what it's doing. It's finding that pivot. It's performing this function, right? That first pivot is going to be find first pivot in column, current column, zero, okay? So this actually returns an array, right? Find first pivot in call, and then this is the current column, right? Uh, so you start off in row one, and then you're, st you're starting off at the current column. Then you have while the column is less than or equal to the number of columns, 
Uh, because again, we're doing a subtract one indexing. If you take a look here in the linear system, we're doing a subtract one from the index. And then row equals one. So we just want to start back at that first row every single time because we're looping through the columns, not the, because we're looping through the columns, but we want to be able to go through every single row as we check the columns because there are two parts. Then we check while row is less than or equal to the number of rows, and the, and the element is equal to zero, then we continue looping through the row. Then we continue looping through, not the row, the column, right? Which means that we're going down the rows, all right? So in that case, uh, until we find a non-zero value, uh, it's just going to keep incrementing, keep repeating this, right? And then basically to the point where the that uh, if it doesn't find that non-zero value, then this will not return anything, and the column number will just increase, and it'll just keep trying to find it until it finds that first non-zero value in that in the matrix. Essentially, that first non-zero value in that matrix, um, then it will return the uh, an integer array row call, and if it doesn't find anything, then it just returns one one which essentially just means that there's nothing there and it'll perform it normally, right? Basically, if it doesn't find anything at all, it means that the uh, it means that the matrix is empty, right? So that's what that does. And then it just does um, pivot swap, right, which is here. If the pivot row, right, so the pivot swap takes the current row in the current column, and then this first value is actually the, the row that that, first pivot is, that that first pivot value is in, in the matrix is located. And then if the pivot row, because you know that's the, the row of the pivot, is equal to the current row, and the pivot row is equal to 1, then we return nothing. And the reason why we is equal to 1, we return nothing, is because we're checking to see whether does that exist or does it not exist, right? If it's at 1, then we're just going to exit. And if it's at that current row that we're at, then we're just going to exit because we know that we don't need to worry about anything. Otherwise, we need to swap rows. If it's not at that current row, then that means it's below the row that we're at, which means we need to swap those two rows. And so in this case, what we actually do is we swap rows twice. We swap the current row and the pivot row, and then we swap the pivot and then we swap the pivot row, which is actually now the current row, which was originally the current row, and the last row. So then that one goes to the bottom. And then it keeps doing this over and over and over again. And why does it keep doing that? Well, because we do while. While the current row is less than or equal to the number of rows, and while the current column is less than or equal to the number of columns. And then we keep incrementing. And so it just does this over and over and over again until the, it exits the loop. And then that is how we check our pivots. Then we put the matrix in echelon form while the current and then start at current row equals one, while the current row is less than or equal to the number of row uh, number of rows. Then we have our position uh, position array, and which is find pivot in row current row, which is basically the same thing, right? But we're referring to the row rather than the column. It literally does the exact same thing. It just finds that first non. It just finds that first pivot in the row rather than in the column. There's no absolutely no difference between these two except for in column and row, but they do perform different functions here. In this case, the reason why this helps with putting it in echelon form is because it allows us to actually do a lot more calculations. So in this case, now this allows us to uh, ro do reduction of rows rather than of columns. That's why we need to refer to the rows. So the current row two, which is the second row, is going to be which is going to be the row underneath, is going to be position zero plus one. That'll be the current row two. Then we continue looping through current row two, which means that we're going down uh, we're going down underneath the row. We're continuing down. Uh, we're con continuing down in that matrix. Okay. Then each time we're going to check to see if it's not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, then we need to remove it. Basically, we're saying that if so, when we're at that first pivot, when we're at that pivot in that row, any value below that pivot in the row has to be zero. Any value below that that pivot has to be zero in echelon in order for the matrix to be in echelon form. That's what this does. Then we need to make all small values equal zero. When I say small values, I mean really small values. So what this does is like if it's less than 0 0.000001, I think that's one millionth, right? Because that's 
hundredths, thousands, ten thousands, hundredths, thousands, millionth. Yeah, that's one millionth. If it's less than one millionth, the absolute value of the of this is less than one millionth, then we set it to zero. We don't want to deal with that because when we divide by something like that, we get a huge number, and that completely changes it to the point where it's like almost infinity. Because you know, as you know, if you're taking calculus, you know that the limit as something approaches one something approaches a number over zero plus or zero minus gives you an infinity or negative infinity. All right. So that's what that does. Then the next thing it does is it makes all pivots equal one. So it actually um, does the uh, multiply by scalar and then it multiplies by that multiplicate multiplicative inverse, right? Which is just one divided by the system dot uh, one divided by sys dot get L position zero and position one. This is just the row and this is the column. Of that pivot and then it just finds that multiplicative inverse where you know when you multiply that by the pivot you should get one all right and so then that's what this does it makes it one and so it does that to every single row then we're moving on to putting the matrix in RF. Yeah. so we're going to ignore the first row because we don't need to worry about that we're going to start off in the second row then while the current row is less than or equal to the number of rows uh we're just going to try and get each of those values right because the reason why we don't need to worry about the first row is because the first row um, should not uh, either, well, if it has a pivot, there's no values above it. And if it doesn't have a pivot, then there's still no values above it, right? Then that current row two is going to be the next, or it's going to be the next one, right? I'm not going to worry about it. And so then it puts it in RAF, which means that we're just going to make sure that when we have a pivot in, in a column, right? That's called a pivot column. If there's a pivot in a column, then any value other than the pivot in that column has to be zero. So any other value in that column has to be a zero other than the pivot, which has to be one. And that is REF. So now if I run this and I actually do do um, like say we have a three by four, right? And then I do zero, 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 right? And then I do zero, 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 actually zero, zero, one. 2 and then 0, 1, 2, 4. See, it sets it to null, right? So that doesn't exist, right? So the reason why it sets that to null is because there's nothing it can do there, right? There's, there's no point in anything that it does. So in this case, this is actually a very bad matrix because this should go down to the bottom. We end up with one, one, zero. And so in this case, this matrix actually isn't a good one because you have zero, 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 zero in the first row, which will honestly never really happen. And that's the reason why it says it's null. Because if you look here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do one divided by that value, right? We're trying to do one divided by zero, and that gives us an error. And so that's the reason why this doesn't exist. So if I actually try this again, put four, and then I do one. If I do the same thing, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 4, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, I basically get the exact same thing, except now I get a matrix that is in RREF, except this should be on the bottom, except it doesn't really matter. So that means that x2 is equal to 0, x1 is free, and x3 is 2. Right? And if we look here, what this says is that x3 is 2. And then that's it. That's all it says, right? There's nothing else. It says x3 is 2. Everything else apparently doesn't matter, right? So we know that x1 is free, but then we don't know what x2 is. So then we actually have to fix that. Uh, I'm not sure why that issue arises, why it does this, other than, you know, divide by zero error. But if it were actually divide by zero error, then it would cause a runtime error, which it's not doing. So in this case, it's just setting the, those values to null. It can't find those values. Okay? So in that case, uh, that's how you would do that. And so this is just a, another example of interfacing, but then it's also a lot of class manipulation. Okay. So hopefully you understand, uh, what just went on today and you've learned something from it and I'll see you in the next video, which will hopefully, and I say, hopefully be polymorphism and inheritance.